Hey everybody, Mrs. Bodishan here. Today we're talking about the rate of dissolving and we're really talking about solutions, right? So um, the word that you probably have heard before is solubility and that's just how much solute you can dissolve in your solvent. And there's gonna be factors that contribute to that. The first one being temperature and the second one being pressure. Now, as these fluctuate, we can either dissolve more or dissolve less of our solute into our solvent. And these can actually be tracked on a solubility curve. I have a video on solubility curves. I'll go ahead and link it below if you would like to know a little bit more information about what those look like. Uh, but we're really gonna focus on in this video is the rate or the speed at which it can dissolve. So here are four factors that contribute to the speed of dissolving. The first one being temperature, second one being agitation, third one being the size of the solute, and the fourth one only applies to gases, and that's the increase in pressure. So let's look at each one individually now really quickly. So temperature. The, the heating of the particles um, is just an increase in kinetic energy, which means they're bumping into each other a lot more rapidly, so it will, it will help dissolve quicker. And you can see that we have this hot water over here and it is dissolving the peppermint really, really fast, while the cold peppermint or the cold water that the peppermint's in is dissolving at a very slow rate because the molecules are moving around slower inside. So um, the next one is agitation. And agitation just means to move around. So if you shake it or stir it or mix it up, like whatever it is you're doing, it's gonna increase that rate of dissolving. So it will, de it will um, increase how fast it dissolves. If you stir it, you can dissolve things very, very quickly. If you don't stir it, it just sits all at the bottom as you see here. And it takes a long time for it to dissolve on its own. Um, now the size of the solute also matters. It's really the surface area here that is contributing to that. If you have um, like a whole Alka-Seltzer tablet and you're gonna dissolve it in a cup of water, this is gonna take a little bit of time because it has a very low surface area. It's only exposed on the outside of it, which means all of our particles on the inside of the Alka-Seltzer tablet are not being touched or hit by our solvent, in this case it would be water, um, so it can't dissolve until it gets to it. So each layer has to get smaller and smaller and smaller to hit each molecule on the inside. It takes a while, but if we go ahead and we crush it up, the smaller we can get, the more surface area we're exposing and the faster it can dissolve. So this is the one that's gonna dissolve the very fastest, then this one, then this one, and this one will be the slowest because it has the lowest amount of surface area. Okay, so everything we've talked about so far, you guys, has been about liquids and solids. Now we're gonna switch gears and we're gonna talk about the dissolving of gases. So what you need to know is that they are completely the opposite of solids and liquids. So when we're talking about temperature, the lower the temperature a gas it becomes, the more it can dissolve, which is very interesting. And it's kind of weird to think about, but you have to think about a gas to begin with. So what you all know about gases so far is the particles are kind of all over the place, right? They're very far apart from one another and they're moving very rapidly. Well, when a gas cools off and it gets colder, it will start to slow down and it will start to come closer and closer together to one another, all the particles. Um, when it does that, it kind of condenses a little bit and we can go ahead and dissolve it into a substance a lot more readily. So that is why temperature is um, for lower temperatures instead of high temperatures for a gas. Pressure is gonna be higher pressure um, increases solubility of gases. So if you look over here, we have a chamber. At the bottom of our chamber, we have some water. At the top, we have a gas and there is an airtight lid on it. And we're gonna press on that lid and apply pressure and you can see that the gas that was up top has now moved in and it dissolved into that liquid below. And that's for the same reason. We've gotten all of our gas molecules closer together and all of a sudden we've almost like forced them into the liquid to dissolve because of their um, proximity, their closeness. So if we look at this in a graphical form, you can see it. This is gonna be a graph for solids, but the trend is the same for liquids as well. You can see on here that our X is temperature and our Y is solubility. So as we move over and increase temperature, we are increasing our solubility for solids and liquids. And then over here, it's the same graph, but we have different lines on it. This time, these are all gonna be gases. 
And you can see this is a negative slope trend, which means that as we increase temperature, we decrease our solubility or how much can dissolve. Um, rules for, solu for solubility you need to know. So polar substances can dissolve in polar substances. That means they're soluble. The same thing goes for nonpolar can dissolve in nonpolar substances. Those are soluble. But what's insoluble or not able to dissolve is going to be polar into a nonpolar or nonpolar into a polar. Okay, those will not mix. They will be heterogeneous or they will create layers on top of one another. Think of like oil and water. It's never going to actually mix. I hope this video was helpful, you guys. Go ahead, like, subscribe, and I'll see y'all later. Bye, everybody.